If you've been digital painting for long, you've hopefully figured out how powerful the eyedropper tool can be. In this video, I'm going to show you one case where it's not as powerful and how you can work around that shortfall. The idea of on-screen mixing should be pretty familiar to you at this point. And if it's not, it's good to go back and watch some of the earlier videos. But it's the idea of using the brush tool and the eyedropper tool to jump back and forth and mix two colors together. And you never have to open up the color picker along the way. So it's easy and powerful. What if I try that same technique on a multiply layer? So I've made a new layer, set it to multiply. I'm going to try the same process. You can notice pretty immediately that the colors are different and that it's not giving me that smooth transition that I was looking for. What this points out is one thing that you might not have realized about how the color blending actually works. You see, the eyedropper tool really works best on an opaque layer, which is to say a layer set to the normal blending mode. So when I tried it here on this multiply layer, it didn't work right. To get a handle on what's happening here, let's take a look at what the eyedropper tool is doing. So these two groupings originally looked identical. But then to modify the one on the left, I changed two of the layer's blending modes. So one of the circles has an add, and another one has a color dodge. So this begs the question, well, what's the layer's actual color? Is it the natural color that I started the layer with? Or is it the modified color, which results from this stack and interaction of blending modes? It can be hard to say. But for the eyedropper tool, it's simple. There's no identity crisis here. It can only see the end result. So if I sample the color of this lower left-hand circle, it has no way of knowing that there used to be a plum there. All it can tell is that it's now this light purple color. So if I want to paint more of that same color on the same layer, I'll sample it and paint. Ah, but you can see it didn't work right. And this is the problem. The eyedropper can only sample the result, not the original color. So if I want to do some on-screen blending, I need to start with a new opaque layer and then blend as normal. But this only works with that additional opaque layer sitting on top. So we're left with a conflict. On one hand, we can say that on-screen mixing only works for opaque painting. And we like mixing, so maybe that suggests an opaque-only workflow. But then on the other hand, I can say that translucent modes like add, multiply, and color dodge are really cool. So maybe we shouldn't work with opaques at all. Well, I've found that these disparate workflows can actually meet nicely in the middle if you know how to plan for it. And if you stay tuned, I'll show you the fundamentals of this hybrid approach in the next free video. Thanks for watching.